be facing outward so everybody saw them but you. They had to be facing inward. And I thought that in itself would help people decide what kind of offense they wanted to go with. But then I see that that doesn't hold true anymore. No. And I just wondered, the language we have here basically is open. No. Isn't it? Or it's is orientation. It it says all non-decorative posts, horizontal supports, crop boundaries, and the like. On page one, C sub three. Orientation? Okay. Yeah, but we said in the property owner. Yeah, a good example. You saw it to see some pictures from Randy Epo. Mm -hmm. Have a decent looking fence. That's from his side. When you see the, the pictures from her side, which I think is also on the side now. Right. I think she's got the smooth side to her. <laughs> so it's, it's a catch, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm thinking with his, if it was uniform, like what's shown here, yeah. it might be a different story, but it's not. Yeah. It's like a 12 inch gap under from the bottom. Well, I think the, dirt to the, bottom the idea on that one was to get the rain, the get at the rain nipple on where you measure your, your height from. Correct. So we made a definition, and that's the definition. A lot of this is strictly just say making definitions on fences because every time we run into problems, mm -hmm. we run into these kind of gray. Well, areas. I know he brought a copy of the ordinance, and it was not clear. And, and as long as we're there in, in item K, what's the definition for attractive? Is it, is it weathered wood? Is it stained wood? Is it painted? Is it a mural? Is it... Is that one, that may be the most ambiguous line in here. And maybe one of the most important. Okay. Any further initial discussion? Yeah, there was a uh, letter here brought to us today from... Uh, uh, Karen, I didn't get a chance to read it because it just hit us one minute before the meeting started today. Should we read? We actually have a public hearing. I guess we could read it in. It's, it's longer than three minutes, but uh, we could read it into the, the uh, public hearing if you would like. Well, my thought is. I'd like to. I hit it. Yeah. My thought on this, uh, Karen in general, is she was one of the people who spurred me in getting this thing going. Um, not just, uh, uh, that's why I was wondering why she's being negative about it, because people want to push me to do it, uh, for number one. The other part is that, uh, obviously she's had battles with her neighbor, and I don't think they talk to each other over this fence battle, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I like the fence ordinance in here, so that, not that the care over talk to her neighbor again, but that prevents two neighbors from never talking to each other fighting over it. Fence and such. So um, she was a bunch of dollar person, one of the people who did a spy me and trying to do something with fences. Okay, um, how about um, we open the public hearing at 7.42 and um, we can read Karen's memo into the record. Um, says, um, I have been asked to write something to balance the proposed fence ordinance that will have its first reading July 2nd and have a public hearing and vote on August 6th. In order that I might refresh my memory on the details of this ordinance, I went to the city's website, but I was unable to locate it. I then remembered that it had been emailed to me as part of a planning packet a few months ago. I pulled it from the e-file and hopefully it can be put on this blog for public viewing. It is my very strong belief that such things should be readily available on the city site so we can follow along with the elected officials so that we may express our opinions to those who vote on our behalf. To be fair, I think some slight adjustments have been made since this rendition, but I think the general overall restrictive nature and tone remains the same. As I can tell, this is really a matter of aesthetics and thus opinion. There doesn't appear to to me to be a definitively right or wrong position, but the vote will be for yes or no, which is definitive. So I am taking a definitive stance and asking our elected officials for a no vote, and this is why. 
first I have trouble answering the question of what benefit is the government trying to achieve. For swimming pool fences, the answer is easy. It's safety. To protect the wandering child from a clear hazard, I have no issue with this, as I do believe that perhaps the first role of government is to protect. That said, I also agree with portions of this ordinance that address opacity levels as they relate to driveways and sidewalks and or other areas where pedestrian traffic intersect with vehicles. I spoke out against allowing the driveway onto Main Street to remain after construction at the old Bank of Evansville location for the very reason of pedestrian safety. What causes me concern with this proposed ordinance is the degree of restriction regarding the aesthetics of fences. I can see no reason to restrict the height of a support post to eight inches above the pickets. I also can't understand the logic in mandating which way the fence should face. If you construct a fence and spend the potential thousands of dollars to improve your property, you should be allowed the choice. What I think is an undesired result of this restrictive ordinance is transference of expenditure for neighbor disputes. What happens deep within a backyard here in town most often only affects those surrounding the property. There are currently state laws on the books which address spike fences and other such unneighborly behaviors. Currently, if a resident constructs a fence above the current six feet height limit and outside of normal building materials, such that it is deemed spiteful or problematic, the offended neighbor can file suit in civil court. What this ordinance would do is transfer the obligation to pursue relief to the city. The city would have to incur the expense of addressing the offensive fence up to an including lawsuit. In pursuit, the offended neighbor may not feel warranted at his own expense. In this way, I believe we could unintentionally magnify and aid neighbor disputes. In line with this, I am also very much opposed to ordinances that pit neighbor against neighbor. I certainly know of people who told me they did not get a building permit for the backyard fence. In, <coughs> in the case of this happening, or someone altering an existing fence, it would likely be a neighbor who reports the offense to the city for action. If you have good relations with your neighbors, you may not experience a problem. If, on the other hand, you live in a neighborhood with Gladys Kravitz, then you most likely will have a visit by the city. My point is that these kinds of ordinances are rarely fairly enforced. Also, when an ordinance is so restrictive, it tends to homogenize. It is designed to create consistency, which some ordinances outright declare as a benefit. However, for me, consistency in fence design directly conflicts with another ordinance being discussed and voted on in the same time frame that sole purpose is to shake up any constancies in home design. I do realize one of the arguments in favor of this restrictive ordinance is that the community will benefit by the subjective beauty of consistent fence design. However, many fences are located in backyards out of view of the general public. If the community at large cannot see it, does the community benefit? Which is to say, is what happening is happening in my backyard on Garfield really impacting folks on Badger Drive? I also wonder if the people of the Planning Commission and more so the Council can really declare that this is in the best interest of our community and the constituents they serve. If you begin looking around, you will find a number of fences, both new and old, that will be non-conforming. I will take this opportunity to remember that Mr. Schwecki only a month ago or so alone approved without direction from the Planning Commission the front fence of Romano's, which under this very ordinance would have been refused. I mention this because I think it is clear by the actions both recent and historic that the citizens of Evansville like diversity in fence architecture. If our elected officials feel the need to provide for everyone, I can assure them that currently everyone is provided for. For those that prefer strict fence requirements, the city offers selected neighborhoods with restrictive covenants. What our elected officials will be doing in approving this ordinance is eliminating choice from the remaining sections of town that currently enjoy freedom of expression through front fence architecture. I attended a meeting where this ordinance was discussed. It was indicated that our current fence ordinance is too vague and that this proposed ordinance was fashioned after two other ordinances 
one from a Wisconsin town and one from elsewhere, I think California. But in researching this topic in preparation for this article, I found the building inspector for Reedsburg claimed vague ordinances are pretty much in line with other municipalities in the state. As for California, I found an article that suggests California cities are rethinking their restrictive fence ordinances, calling them draconian. It is my opinion that the city of Evansville does not rely on a standard look for its character like the Swiss Valley Village of New Blairs, and thus does not need to regulate her fence look that is constant with any image we are trying to portray. Put another way, a unique fence does not detract from the look of our town. As I pointed out earlier, given the number of fences that would not conform, I would go so far as to say our citizens feel unique fences enhance our neighborhoods. The city is trying to form force fences on a certain standard and quality, and I would suggest a better approach would be to expand the building improvement grant focus to include requests for fence financial assistance. If a homeowner desires a fence but cannot afford to meet such standards, then they could apply for assistance with the understanding that the fence would need to meet these guidelines. In this way, we don't have to be restricted in order to upgrade the field. Your name. Other comments from the public? Yes. Dick Wolf, 255 East Main. Uh, some of the objections that Karen had and some I had earlier have already been taken care of, mostly the grandfathering aspect. Uh, I could, I'd like to enter into the record the, the document for the city of Stillwater that has a fence ordinance similar to the opening paragraphs in ours that it has the fence permit has to be uh, by a special person, a city planner or somebody else there, not the clerk. And then as you've modified the language here, the process is that the fence is inspected as far as design and then it is approved for building. I think that's a key part of what's been happening that not just with the fences but with everything, everything else, that the person goes out and erects the fence and then then they have, to be, they have to, when the city inspector comes out, they have to really either rip it out or let it go. Um, and secondly, the, uh, in Minnesota anyway, Stillwater, a historic community, as you know, um, they have the fences of law right up to the lot line. Now, is it a matter of Wisconsin law that you have this setback, or is this just a matter of your own discretion uh, in that you set it? I think it's three, 30, uh, 30 inches or 36 inches? No, and here's I think it just is on your property. <coughs> I thought I remember the setback of the floor. From a, from a sidewalk, I think. Oh, here it says. Setback from a sidewalk. Setback from a sidewalk. From a sidewalk. Okay. okay, here's Stillwater. Fences in residential districts may be placed on the lot line, provided that the footings are within the fence owner's property. Um, and. Then they also have the one about no existing fence in violation of this section will be allowed to be replaced or rebuilt. That's essentially what we're doing here. It's not going to be, have to be removed, which would be an impediment to any property sale, which is what I, I was concerned about, that we would have people going to closing, finding out that their fence would have to be removed and would, it would loss up a deal. So, And finally, about trellises, I just think that we listened to Roger Berg and the builders. They didn't want any impediment on the free exercise of uh, commerce in Evansville. And yet, when it comes to another area, such as fences, we don't really care about placing a fence around pool, uh, pools of water or waterways or hazards to kids, which you know, fences protect and serve too, not just police. But when it comes to style, we're really detailed that inner versus outie is a really big thing. I think we've got to examine that fences, as far as protection of children, are important too. And I, you know, so I think we've got to be a little consistent there. You're not going to meddle at all with the builders, and they may be right in letting the market dictate there. But I think to, to on the other hand, after you went with them on that, to say, okay, let's really get into trellis management. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let trellises go. We've got some other problems here to deal with besides trellises. Um, 
A lot of people have built any versus Audi fences. I built some of each. I have the exterior facing the street as with the stylish out, and I inadvertently put the uh, the ugly side out on the side yards. So, and it's not obvious to a lot of people in Evanston that that wasn't the, that isn't stylish. So, in summary. Three feet is not absolute. Stillwater has 42 inches for a front fence. 30 seemed a little bit low to the mayor. Why not 42? Uh, so that's the, a lot of the honors portions you've already corrected. But I think that uh, that's basically it. I think trellises is going too far. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay, I'll close the hearing at um, 7.53. And we'll bring the discussion back to the commission. Okay. This is the Evansville Observer.